Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. And this video is being recorded Saturday, November 15th, 2014. And I actually expect this video will go up pretty quick, so you should see this within a week or two. Um, let's go ahead and jump right into the flight. I'm sitting here on the moon in the XR2. Kind of take a quick look outside so you can see. Get the camera oriented in some way it makes sense. And you can see I've got several vessels here on the moon. Um, that's just because this is a default scenario for me. When I don't really know what I want to do, I load this scenario. And I've got vessels kind of sprinkled throughout the solar system. You know, some of them on Earth, some on the moon, some on Mars, some on the various moons around the solar system. And that just gives me a lot of options so I can just kind of jump in and go. I can see that the nose cone's open, so I'll go ahead and take care of that before I forget about it. But what I'm going to do in this flight uh, what I'm going to attempt to do is take off and rendezvous with a space station that I have in orbit around the moon. It's not really in the best orbit, so uh, at least not in the best orbit in terms of taking off from Brighton Beach. So we'll probably have a large plane change in there somewhere. And furthermore, I'm also not going to really concern myself with doing things perfectly uh, or even you know perfect by my own standards, which are very low. Um, and that's just because I've been away for a very long time and just getting really re familiar with how things work is going to be enough of a challenge. So let's go back inside and again I'm going to close that nose cone before I forget about it. So let me come down to the bottom panel, turn on the APU, and what is the nose cone? Control K. Yes, it's Control K, so I remembered that. And you can see that's closing. And uh, let me go ahead and time warp to get through that animation. There it's closed. Let's turn the APU back off. And I'll show you the target. I went ahead, uh, bef before I show you the target, I went ahead and made sure that all my resources were aplenty. So fuel shouldn't be an issue. We have 10 days to get there. So let's go ahead and take a look at our target. Let me press F3. And we're going to choose the ESS on this list. There it is. And there's the ESS, and I have it in orbit around the moon, kind of high up, if I can find the moon. Where, oh, where did the lunar body go? There it is. So there's the moon, and you can tell, you know, it's, uh, it's up here a ways, so, uh, you know, we're not in tight around the moon. And for some reason, it almost looks like it's falling to me. That's weird. Um, so this is, where we're this is where my target's going to be. And I hit the wrong button there. That's now, now I'm inside the ESS, and that's not what I want. Let me control F3 back to the XR2. I've already chosen the ESS, so you can see that here. Let me switch over to make these larger. So you can see that here in this MFD, and you can see it, it kind of looks like it has an oblong orbit, but it doesn't. Its orbit's zero eccentricity. The reason for this shape is just because uh, from, our, from our position on the moon, it's kind of a tilted orbit. So again, we're probably going to have a plane change in there somewhere. And if you look over here at uh, maps, uh, map MFD, we can see that the ESS is more or less on an equatorial orbit. And if we take off from Brighton Beach and fly at a 90 degree heading, our orbit is going to be very much not equatorial. So yeah, we're going to have a plane change in there. All right, let me now uh, consider what it is I have to do. Let me bring up line plane MFD, let's target the ESS, and I'm guessing what we'll probably want to do here, and again, I'm not going to stress over, you know, getting things real perfect, because it's just been, it's been too long, my, my brain in terms of what to do in orbiter is kind of muddy, very, at the, at the, at most, so I think probably, though, what we want to do, I'm going to guess, is we want to make sure we take off when the ESS is crossing our orbital plane, assuming again that we take off and fly to 90 degree heading. So let's do that, and while I'm kind of fast forwarding time, I'll look at, let me make sure I turned off the APU. Okay, I did. And so while I'm fast forwarding time, I'll kind of look at the relative inclination and the rate and see what's happening there. It looks like the rate's currently still going down. So I think, yeah, I think kind of no matter what the case, we're going to be wanting to take off, you know, when we're crossing this node here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's going to be it. So let's zoom in on that location over there to 
get an idea when the ESS is approaching. Let's go forward a little bit more because the moon rotates very slowly, so we don't really want to give a lot of lead time. And we're going to go pretty much with that. Get a little closer. Yeah, that's probably too much. But let's take a quick look. Yeah, that'll be good enough. You can see it's still leading the node just a little bit. All right, so let me uh, control H to give myself a HUD. And I'm currently facing 190, it looks like. So if I take off, lift up, and rotate clockwise, it will get me to 90 degrees faster than if I were to go the other way. All right, let's uh, APU on. Control A. Let's open the hover doors. And let's get the retro doors ready for any mistakes I make. Turn the HUD back on. It keeps turning off. And I don't think we need the APU on right now, so let's go ahead and kill that. Rotation. Make sure we have rotation mode ready. And what we're going to do, we're going to lift up and... Uh, we're just going to go for it. Again, I'm not going to do a lot of fussing with the planning because um, I just don't know what to do hardly anymore. So let's go. Warning. On external cooling offline. Forgot to turn off external cooling. APU offline. Guess we do need the APU for the landing gear. Translation. Rotation. Gear up. Start rotating around. Start taking out a little bit of that hover so I don't climb too fast. Although now it's Gear up and the vertical speed starting to come back down, so I want to watch that. There's 240 coming around to 290, so we're almost uh, we're passing west. Take out a touch more hover. I'm coming around to 10 degrees, 20. Vertical speed's almost back to zero, so we're going to be uh, technically dropping here in just a moment, but we'll be at 90 by then, so it's not a problem. All right, there we go. There's 90. Back up just a touch, and full power on the main. And before we pitch up, we'll go ahead and take out all that hover. Now I want to pitch up just enough to keep the velocity vector above the uh, line there. Let me turn my volume down a little bit on my in my headset. Seems awfully loud to me. Information. APU 600. Okay, what do we want? Let's watch Orbit MFD. And let's go no target for the moment. 500. Technically we're still dropping a little bit, but you can see that the velocity vector is almost up here and we're at 500 meters, so it's not a problem. And now we're going to be crossing the zero point. Now I'm actually going to start pitching down a little bit because I really don't want to climb or else I'll just have this really oblong orbit. And I don't even know what my target altitude is just yet, but the first thing I want to do is basically establish enough velocity so that I don't have to worry about it and then I'll kind of start making some decisions after that. Let me switch over to the bigger view though. I really wish the HUD wouldn't shut off when I do that. Information. APU running. Okay, we've almost got ourselves in orbit. And let's go with that. Let's put in just a touch more. Turn off the APU. I heard the uh, call out a moment ago. So, okay, there's uh, 40 some meters, uh, kilometers rather. We'll go with that for now. All right, now let me figure out exactly where the ESS is at, sort of uh, height-wise and so forth. So, so we need to climb a ways. Now I'm gonna guess that it's gonna be better to do our plane change after we've established our our high point, because again, the closer you are into the body, the more expensive the plane change. So we'll take care of the plane change later. So let me go ahead and bring up one side of my orbit to uh, 1,900. Go ahead and do that now. Translation. Rotation. Just get back to the center point here. Full power on the main to raise the orbit. A little 
little bit more. And we're going, oh, actually quite a bit more. So we're going all the way to 1.9. But I don't really want to overshoot it. So something like that, maybe a little bit more. Somewhere in that neighborhood. Okay, we'll go with that. Now we will plan on doing a plane change correction here. Hopefully, you know, now, now that I'm looking at this, I actually, one thing I didn't take into account, I should have set the high point of the orbit at a node. I just didn't even think about it. Because basically I want to do the plane change when I'm when I'm up here. And, and it would be it would be way better if that were the case when I was crossing a node. But again, you know, I, I just it's a bit unfortunate that I missed that, but I'm not gonna fuss over it. So let's go ahead and go over to the descending node here. It's the closest, and we'll do a plane change, an expensive plane change. Switch the HUD over to orbit mode and let's go forward. And we know that when we get there, we're going to require a, let's see, it's going to be the, de the descending node, so we're going to require a 51 second burn total. So we want to start the burn at about 25 seconds, roughly, before we get there. So let's uh, plan on that. So at about 200 seconds, we'll come out of time warp and get the vessel oriented in the orbit plus position. I actually had to think about that. <laughs> Ascending equals anti-normal. Let's go forward a little bit more. I was uh, actually making a joke. Somebody commented on one of my videos, and I was kind of telling them I'm, I'm out of content, you know. So if I don't get something recorded very soon, I'm not going to have anything here in just a couple of weeks. And I made the joke that I, I've been away for so long that I need to go back and look at my own absolute beginner guide just to remember how to use Orbiter. Clearly kidding, but, you know, not... Terrible, not real far off from the truth. I mean, you get out of this stuff for a long time and you just you forget a lot. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, turn this off for a moment. Warp time. Get closer to that time to the node. I can see I'm drifting off, but I'll correct that when I get closer. All right, that's close enough. And we still have a rotational thruster, so let's get back over to that plus 90 position. I'm going to go ahead and leave the uh, autopilot off, and I'll just manually correct it. At the very least, I can do that still, I think. Okay, a little bit closer. Again, we want to start this burn at about 25 seconds, so right about now. Putting in just a little bit of trans uh, rotational thrust there to keep myself in agreement with the, uh, the plus 90 on the HUD there. But also very important, keep an eye on that relative inclination to make sure you don't overshoot. And it's actually bringing up my periapsis a little bit at the same time. I suppose that's a side benefit. Now this, this, this unfortunately isn't as efficient as it should be because I just completely failed to take into account when I would reach the node. So you can see I'm not at apoapsis, I'm not even close to it. Ideally, I would be doing this burn when I, when I was here. About four degrees out of plane, two, one, and shut things down. Translation. Finished up, eh, we still have enough. Actually, though. No. Rotation. Get rotated back to the correct position here and then put in just a little bit more main engine. Now we'll kill it. Translation. And translate just a touch. And I think that's as good as it's going to get. So we're 0 0.01 degrees out of plane, but that's fine. We're there. All right, now let's see what that looks like in orbit MFD. So now you can see we're uh, much more in agreement with with how things should look. So let's go to the prograde position. 
one of the next orders of business is going to be to at least think about our orbit circularization. But I'm not going to worry about, obviously, I'm not going to circularize completely because I do need to catch up to the ESS or have it catch up with me. So if I circularize right now, I'm on the other side of the moon and it would take forever for our two vessels to come into close proximity. We don't want that. I don't want that. And you don't want that either because then this would be a much longer video. So let's turn the prograde autopilot off. And being this far out, I'm not going to really think too much about the rendezvous part yet because we're just too far away. So let's go to Apoapsis and let's bring up the other side of our orbit a little bit. 13 kilometers is high enough that I wouldn't have to worry about colliding back with the moon, but that's still kind of scraping the mountaintops, so to speak. Okay, we're almost at Apoapsis. Let's go to the prograde position. And you can see the ESS is catching up with us quite quickly, so um, I don't want to go around too many times. Coming up to Apoapsis, and let's raise that orbit just a touch, uh, 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 quite a bit, but that's just a rough estimate. Now I know that I'm very, very far up enough above the surface that I don't have to worry about hitting the surface. The other thing I would like to take into account, if I can, I don't want to go around any more than I have to. You know what else I need to do? How many of you guys remembered that I didn't have the radiator open? Never mind, I do. It's already open. How many of you guys realize that I still had the landing gear down? No, I don't. Hover doors are open. Wow, I'm such a noob. Okay, let's take care of that. Close the hover doors. I thought that I forgot to open the radiator, but I actually never had it closed because on the moon, um, there's no atmosphere to like rip off the radiator. So I just had it open the whole time. All right, back to this view. And why does the HUD keep turning off? That's so annoying. And, and it switches the surface. Okay. So anyway, I think what I started to say there was like, since I'm here, I'm going to go around much faster than the ESS. And in fact, you can see that my orbital period is 14,700 something. The orbital period of the ESS is 20,000. So can I go around again and then raise my orbit next time? Or if I do that, is the ESS going to pass me? I don't know. And I don't even know how to know. A difference of 6,000 seconds. That's a lot. So in other words, it's going to take 20,000 seconds for the ESS to get back to where it's at right now. So in 20,000 seconds, I will have gone all the way around once, plus I will have gone another, you know, that much or something like that. So I think I can afford to go around. Let's find out. And if I'm wrong, so be it. See how quickly I catch up once I get down to my low point. I think I can even go around again. Now watch how quickly I close the distance. That may be too much. Ah, I'm going to overshoot. Dang it. That sucks. Let me think about this for a second. If I overshoot, then that means I need to slow down, which means I have to raise the other side of my orbit higher than the ESS so that it has time to catch up to me. There's no chance that we're actually going to rendezvous up here. No, that's not going to happen. No such luck. No, I'm going to pass it. 
Boy, that's awfully close. Talk about dumb luck if that were the case. Let's see. Target. ESS. Yeah, we're only 300 kilometers away from it. Oh my gosh, that is just such dumb luck. Am I going to be able to rendezvous right now? Mm, see what's happening though now is if we're getting right to this point. Uh, the relative velocity quickly starts to drop because basically I'm starting to overtake it. But with the distance of only 97 kilometers, I could almost make it work now. See how close I can get. No, it's not going to happen. That's too far out. 90, 90 kilometers, definitely too far out. Okay. So let's bring up Orbit MFD. Let's go back to the prograde position here. So what I'm going to do when I reach Apoapsis, then I'm going to have to raise the other side of my orbit, and I'm going to actually have to raise it higher than the ESS, because basically I'm going to end up overtaking the ESS, I think. At any event, I need to get to the Apoapsis. Let's see what happens. Okay, well, I'm still behind it a little bit. That's actually good news. So, I mean, technically, I would normally probably probably be using Transex and or Sync Orbit at this point, but just pure luck that it happened to work out so nicely, I'm able to do a lot of this type of thing without really even having to worry about fine, finer calculations. So now that we're this close, let me go ahead and uh, more or less circularize the orbit. I want to stay just a touch lower than the ESS because it is in front of me now by a bit. Still have the retro doors open too. And uh, we're just going to blindly do this. So full power on the main now. Let, Apple, let the time to the apoapsis catch up a little bit. Raise the orbit a little more. Okay, now we're past apoapsis. And now I'm kind of just vaguely looking at the difference in time. Got that's a bit much, probably. And I can also look at our difference in relative velocity now, but I want to stay just a little bit lower than the ESS because I do want to catch up to it. Okay, let's go with that for now, and that's just a rough guess. Now I can start using tools that actually help me make you know, better decisions. So let me uh, start with sync orbit, target the ESS, and we want to intersect, uh, I don't know, let's call it my apoapsis. So I'm going to say modify, this is the reference point for the intersection, ships periapsis and ships apoapsis. And that's, again, just kind of a, uh, kind of a guess. Now, See, the DT men's only got a difference of 51, which isn't ter which isn't too much. It can be easily easily be corrected with just a little bit of translation. Difference in relative velocity is 83 meters per second, which is probably a little on the high side, if you, depending on how you want to approach. For me, that's certainly fine. I have no problems going in sort of Leroy Jenkins style. You know, I'll come in at a thousand meters a second. I don't, I don't sweat it. But if you're a little bit more careful, cautious, and realistic, you want to see this number as low as possible as well. Okay, now, relative inclination has slipped off just a, a little bit. Actually, no, it hasn't. That's what it always was, 0.01. But maybe as I go around and pass the nodes, I'll try to remember to take care of that as well. Rotation translation. So at the moment, let me just... Okay, so if I translate back a little bit, that's going to bring the DT men down, or rather up. So if I go forward this way a little bit, I can bring the DT min. And the DT min is the difference in time for when you pass a 
intersection and the ESS does as well. But it doesn't do any good to have that exactly zero if your altitudes don't also match very closely. Because in other words, you're passing the same point in a 2D plane, because again, these a lot of these MFDs are only 2D, but it doesn't take into account altitude, so you may be vastly far off in altitude. So that's one of the other things we'll have to correct. So if I'm saying at my apoapsis, ship's apoapsis, which is here, I think, yeah, that's how, that's my apoapsis. See, I would be about 20 kilometers higher than the ESS. That's that's a bit much. You know, you, that's probably too much to be able to work with. So we're going to have to bring down the apoapsis a bit, and I'll take care of that at the periapsis and I will take care of that in the next video because I'm coming up not too terribly far away from 30 minutes and I'm kind of thinking these days I might even try to bring it down more closer to 25. So hopefully you liked uh, this video, liked seeing me resurrected from the dead. Never really did get a chance to talk about where I've been and what I've been doing but I think everybody pretty well knows. Basically just very very busy with school and stuff. I started back to college in May and um, it wasn't too bad over the summer, but now that I'm into the fall, I'm taking five classes right now, and it's keeping me very, very busy. And then the, the, free, the little bit of free time that I do have, I don't really like spending it in orbiter for whatever reason. I, I mean, I do, but I don't. It's, you know, I, I like to do other things as well. Talk a little bit more about that in the next video. If you like this video, like it. If you didn't like it, hit the thumbs down button. I don't have a problem with that. Just tell me, uh, I would, if you do, if you didn't like it for some reason, though, leave a comment. Let me know what was wrong with it. Otherwise I will see you in the next part.